Hey everyone, this is Chris with Light Coalition, and I just wanted to put out a quick video about magnetism, and we're going to talk about the bar magnet and the, the Coulomb law. So, I just want to put this video out because the more I work with magnets and the more I study and research the, the different things I see. So, like I said, we're going we're gonna to cover the bar magnet, the electric effect of what people call magnetism, and how everything works with nature's bar magnet and you know how science sees things okay so the first thing I'd like to talk talk about is the Coulomb law which states that opposites attract and likes repel which doesn't make much sense the more I study and the more I get into it because if that was true up here you know I outlined the bar magnet then we would have poles in the center if they attracted and not at the ends so what what's really going on is the fact that we have nature's bar magnet over here and this still line in the center separates and we have compression going to each end which is where the poles are so it's, it's similar to this and the fact that you could have male and female on one side or north and south that people call it but what's really happening is it's getting compressed towards the poles and not towards the center you know because if like repelled and opposite the track then we'd have poles here at the center and we couldn't really gather any ounce of anything in the universe because if they repel, then how, what's keeping them together? Not some force, like they say. And also in nature, like potentials seek like potentials. For example, water vapors rise to meet the equilibrium of like potentials in the sky, and then water will drop, you know, water droplets will fall towards the earth, which is, you know, compressed, dense, just like the water droplets, and they're finding their equilibrium and their like potential in the earth. So that's obviously different than what, what nature says. Okay, so getting back to the, the bar magnet, which I have here, which is just a standard Neo magnet. And I'll, I'll actually show you in my Tesla meter some measurements that I'm about to talk about. So science says we have this bar magnet here with a pole on each end. And supposedly that they attract each other, which what's really happening is they're, they're getting compressed from this center still line, which you can actually measure, and I'll show that in a second. And they're actually getting compressed towards the ends. And I like to call this center piece the, the cathode. Some call it the blotch wall or the neutral line, but I, I like to call it the cathode. And that's getting compressed towards the anode, which is the, the compressed sphere here in the center. And I have a diagram here which actually shows the vortex or the vortices and the movements that's happening. So when, when it's getting extended to each pole, it's moving at an end of vortex motion. So these magnetic fields are actually moving this way. And to me, this is an electric-based universe or an electric universe. And electricity is the sole worker of the universe. And what we see as magnetism is really just, you know, compression that's happening and not so much a, a force that's pulling from the inside. So obviously gravity and magnetism to me, from what I've, learned and what, what feels right to me is different than what science talks about and that's you know much more of an in-depth conversation I won't really touch on that right now except what we can actually measure so again here here's what science says the magnetic fields in flow is for an electromagnet and a bar magnet it actually says that it flows in from the south and out from the north and then loops around which Again, it's not what I'm seeing, and it really doesn't make sense with the, the studies I've been doing. So I'm going to go ahead and get my meter here, and we'll uh, see what we can get. So I have my, my Tesla meter here, and I'm going to find this still center here on the magnet. So as you can see, I have zero right here, and if I move each side you'll see it change so we know we're in that that center line then if I measure the ends that's gonna be our compression point and our strongest point which here I have 526 so based on what we just showed you know that the measurement showed that still point here with the strongest points being on the ends and what I'm gonna do is uh, after this video is done I'll include a little experiment I do with my jar here with vegetable oil and fillings and I'll switch the camera around so we can actually see a good example of 
the bar magnet and how the flows actually work and you'll see the fillings actually moving in the direction they're supposed to and not like this diagram here. Alright, I wanted to go back to the to nature's bar magnet here for a second. One thing that science, or today's science, I guess you want to call it, talks about is, you know, that a, a bar magnet, for example, has two poles, and, or just one pair, when in actuality it has eight poles. There are these steps. Instead of just one step, there's multiple steps down to this compression area. And if anybody's familiar with, you know, Russell cosmology, it's the, the formula of locked potentials. These are just focal points going down into what, again, I'm calling the anode, or what others have called the anode. And there's really eight poles, so four pairs. So again, you have these vortex motions that are going here that are created by these lenses. And you have convex and concave lenses, which again is another complete in-depth video that uh, you know I'll do later. But you can go to lightcoalition.org and see a post up that I have now that shows how these wave interferences can create these lenses and those lenses create focal points here in different spots so again you have spin that's going on with these these vortices and the spin direction is very important to either what science calls repel where they, they cannot void each other or they void each other just like in humans male and female you know connect and from them you know something is birthed so we have this this cathode and this anode and these spin the spin that is happening and connecting the two together and once they void each other that's again where the stillness happens so you have the stillness where it starts but when you have two bar magnets that come together or atomic systems that come together they create this anode which is really atoms or, or different types of matter and then there's a still point still that's separate and they, they void each other but they they still when, once they're separated from each other and they're polarized from this still point, they basically create their polarity, male and female, but there are also tensions that are created, and that's what electricity is. Electricity is, is the tensions, like using a rubber band. If, if you have a rubber band in your hand and it's sitting there, it's basically still. It's at its equilibrium, it's at its rest position, but if you start to stretch it, you create tensions, and if you let that rubber band go, it snaps back but the the farther you stretch it the more potential is created it's like this you know the farther or, or more compressed it goes and farther away from the center the, the stillness the stronger it is the more electrical potential it can express so again when a male and female condition connect they're voiding each other and creating that stillness from which they seek because once they're separated from their equilibrium they try to seek that equilibrium in the opposite again so it's not the opposite attract they're getting compressed towards each other and because of this the spin direction which of course spin is all based on perception depends on which way you look at it something can be turning you know counterclockwise but if you get to the other side and look at it from this angle it's come you know it's it's a different direction but it's it's the same it's just depending upon our perception on which what's left what's right what's clockwise counterclockwise that kind of thing so that's pretty much that, and I wanted to show the measurements of two neomagnets coming together, which I'm going to be very careful to do because these are, are strong and brittle. But now we have two bar magnets together, and I want to show on my meter that the actual still point now is in the center, and they compressed even farther out to the ends. So give me just a moment here to measure this out. See if I can find the still point. There we go, it's fluctuating because my finger's slipping just a little bit, but we're getting close. Oop. There it is. So there's that zero still point. And now if we measure the ends, they've actually gotten a little stronger. From 520 to 540. So they, they've compressed themselves, or by combining, they've created a, a bigger, stronger magnet with that still point now in the center. And I'll also insert a video when I'm done here of testing with the jar to explain it a little better there too. Okay, here I'm going to show the example that I was talking about with a little film viewer here. Show the magnet on there. 
And look at that center line of stillness that's going up from the middle and everything else is combining at the end. And you can see the field lines that are compressing down this way. If you imagine the lenses being in there, you know, probably being some large ones up here. But here's the this, this still center point. I'm going to do that one more time so you can see a little better. Shake it up. Sure doesn't look like it's going into one end and coming out the other. Now I'm gonna do one with two here. Okay, here we go with two. One more time. Hope that helps.